Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Australia celebrates Denmark's Queen Mary with cocktails, Danish fiesta. Pacific nation Nauru cuts ties with Taiwan. Andy Murray says it's a definite possibility he's played final Australian Open match after straight set first round loss. Sports on TV for Tuesday, January 16. Aggressive de Menor treating pressure as a blessing and not a curse as Australian Open quest begins. Australia celebrates Denmark's Queen Mary with cocktails, Danish fiesta. South China Morning Post. Mary Donaldson, an Australian, has become the Queen of Denmark after her husband, Crown Prince Frederick, was proclaimed King of the European Nation. The news has been celebrated across Australia, with events taking place in Hobart, Mary's hometown, and Melbourne. The Australian Prime Minister described the occasion as a great day and said that Mary had brought enormous support and pride to Australians. The Tasmanian government has also announced that they will be sending a gift to the royal couple and making a donation to a charity supported by Queen Mary. Pacific nation Nauru cuts ties with Taiwan. Telegraph. The Pacific island of Nauru has cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan and switched allegiance to China, a move that will concern the US and its allies over Beijing's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Nauru is the first of Taiwan's official diplomatic allies to abandon the island since Saturday's election, which saw the appointment of a president defiant of China's calls not to elect him. Taiwan has cut ties in return, accusing Beijing of buying Nauru off. Nauru has recognized China before, but its decision to do so again leaves Taiwan with only 12 formal allies. Andy Murray says it's a definite possibility he's played final Australian Open match after straight set first round loss. CNN. Former world number no. one tennis player Andy Murray has suggested the Australian Open could be his last tournament after losing in the first round. The 36 year old, who has won this Grand Slam event five times, was defeated 6 4 6 2 6 2 by Argentina's Tomas Martin Echeverri. Speaking afterwards, Murray said it was a definite possibility he would not play in Melbourne again. Murray has battled serious injuries in recent years, including two hip surgeries in 2019. Aggressive de Menor treating pressure as a blessing and not a curse as Australian Open quest begins. ABC. Australia's Alex de Menor, the country's best hope at the Australian Open, is not feeling the weight of public expectation after starting his campaign as a top 10 player. De Menor advanced to the second round after Canadian Milos Raonic withdrew due to a hip injury. De Menor has credited his new more aggressive playing style for his rise into the top 10 on the rankings. Indigenous tourism goes deeper than dinner and a show. New York Times. New Zealand and Australia are seeing an increase in demand for indigenous-led travel experiences. Tourists are looking for immersive and authentic experiences that allow them to engage more deeply with the local culture. In New Zealand, tourists are moving away from the checkbox mentality and seeking transformative experiences that allow them to understand the meaning and stories behind cultural practices such as the haka. Demand is also growing for indigenous-led tourism experiences in Australia, with tour companies making efforts to involve traditional owners in their tours. The trend reflects a broader societal shift towards recognizing indigenous rights and attempting to right past wrongs. The global indigenous-owned and led tourism experiences sector is forecast to grow from $40 billion in 2022 to $65 billion by 2032. As a result, travel companies are expanding their indigenous tourism portfolios and introducing new indigenous experiences in a range of destinations, including the US, Taiwan, Canada and Costa Rica. Tennis star Zverev to stand trial in assault case in May but will not have to appear in court. Associated Press. Olympic tennis champion Alexander Zverev will stand trial for alleged assault in Berlin in late May, according to German news agency DPA. Zverev is accused of assaulting a woman during an argument in Berlin in May 2020, but has denied the accusation. A court in Berlin issued a penalty order in October, but Zverev contested the ruling, leading to the trial. The trial will start on May 31, during this year's French Open, but Zverev will not need to make a personal appearance and can be represented by a lawyer. Zverev was cleared of domestic abuse allegations by the men's tennis tour in January 2021. Today in sports, Stephen Curry is first in NBA history to hit eight plus three pointers in three straight games. Associated Press. In 1962, Wilt Chamberlain won MVP honors in the NBA All Star game despite his team, the East, losing to the West. 
In 1972, the Dallas Cowboys set a Super Bowl record of 252 rushing yards in a victory over the Miami Dolphins. In 1988, Jimmy the Greek Snyder was fired from CBS for making racial comments. In 2015, the NCAA restored 112 football wins to Penn State and reinstated Joe Paterno as the winningest coach in major college football history. In 2022, Novak Dokovic is deported by the Australian government before playing in the Australian Open due to his unvaccinated status. Houthi missile strikes US-owned cargo ship in Red Sea. Telegraph. Houthi rebels have struck a US-owned container ship with a missile in the Red Sea, causing a fire in the hold. The MV Gibraltar Eagle, a US-owned and operated container ship, was hit off the coast of Aden in Yemen. No injuries were reported and the ship has continued its journey. British maritime security firm, Ambry, has assessed the attack as targeting U.S. interests in response to U.S. military strikes on Houthi military positions in Yemen. U.S. Central Command has said that Iranian-backed Houthi militants fired an anti-ship ballistic missile from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. This comes after U.S. forces shot down a missile fired at an American warship on Sunday, the first confirmed attack of its kind since Allied strikes on the group last week. Naomi Osaka return cut short after first-round Australian Open defeat. Telegraph. Naomi Osaka's comeback at the Australian Open was cut short after she was defeated by Caroline Garcia in the first round. Despite the loss, Osaka showed promising signs of returning to her best level and received warm support from the Melbourne crowd. The evidence suggests that Osaka has every chance of climbing back to the top of the sport and regaining her previous level of notoriety on the court. Highly venomous snake found in boy's underwear drawer. Yahoo! An eastern brown snake, one of the world's most dangerous snakes, was found in a three-year-old boy's underwear drawer in Australia. The snake hunter, Mark Pelly, was called to remove the reptile, which was hiding in a pile of laundry. Eastern brown snakes are fast-moving, aggressive and highly venomous, and cause more deaths from snake bites in Australia than any other species. Champions return after childbirth ends in straight sets, as de Menor continues hot start to 2024. ABC Naomi Osaka has been defeated in straight sets during her return to Grand Slam tennis at the Australian Open. Osaka, a two-time champion at Melbourne Park, was playing in her third match since giving birth to her first child in July. She faced French 16th seed Caroline Garcia in the final match on Rod Laver Arena. Despite not playing at her best, Osaka put up a valiant effort against Garcia, who secured a hard-fought 6-4, 7-6-7-2 victory. Garcia praised Osaka, saying she was playing at a high level just six months after giving birth. In another match, Alex de Menor advanced to the second round of the Australian Open after Milos Raonic retired due to injury. De Menor expressed his concern for Raonic's injury and wished him a speedy recovery. And that's a wrap on today's news, folks. We've covered quite a range of topics, from celebrations in Australia to tennis upsets and even a surprise visitor in a young boy's underwear drawer. But let's dive a little deeper and analyze some of these stories. First, we have the news of Australia celebrating Denmark's Queen Mary. It seems the Aussies are quite proud of their very own Mary Donaldson becoming Queen Consort of Denmark. And what better way to celebrate than with cocktails and a Danish fiesta? It's always heartwarming to see countries come together to celebrate such occasions, even if it means a few hungover Australians the next day. Next up, we have the Pacific nation of Nauru cutting ties with Taiwan and switching allegiance to China. This move will undoubtedly raise concerns among the US and its allies about China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. It's like watching a game of diplomatic chess unfold, with each move having its own consequences. Taiwan now finds itself with only 12 formal allies, and it seems like a tough uphill battle for them. In the world of sports, we have Andy Murray suggesting that the Australian Open could be his last tournament. After a straight-set loss in the first round, Murray said it's a definite possibility he won't play in Melbourne again. It's a sad moment for tennis fans, as Murray has had an incredible career, battling through injuries and achieving great success. But hey, at least he's got five Australian Open titles under his belt. And speaking of sports, let's not forget the extensive list of events happening on TV today. From hockey to basketball to tennis, there's something for everyone. And if you're an early bird, you can catch the Olympic field hockey qualifier between the US and New Zealand at 6.30am, set your alarms, folks. Moving on to indigenous tourism, it seems that travelers are seeking more immersive and authentic experiences that allow them to engage with local cultures on a deeper level. New Zealand and Australia are seeing an increase in demand for indigenous-led travel experiences, reflecting a broader shift towards recognizing indigenous rights and attempting to right past wrongs. 
it's an important step towards cultural understanding and appreciation. Now, who would have thought we'd be talking about a highly venomous snake in a boy's underwear drawer? Well, that's Australia for you. Eastern brown snakes are no joke, and it's lucky that snake hunter Mark Pelly was called to remove the reptile safely. Just another day in the land down under, where even your underwear drawer isn't safe from deadly creatures. And last but not least, we have Naomi Osaka's return to Grand Slam tennis. Despite being defeated in straight sets, Osaka showed promising signs of returning to her best level. It's always inspiring to see athletes make a comeback after facing challenges, and I have no doubt that Osaka will continue to climb back to the top of the sport. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the news and analysis. Now it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any questions or comments? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website. 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.